still blessing us. Yes, yes, yes. In the midst of our storms. Yes, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. 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 He's worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to talk to you today from all my people, God. Yes, sir. Don't know about you, but I'm hungry for the word of the Lord. Matthew is the fourth chapter. And verse 4, Matthew, the fourth chapter, and verse 4. When you get it, say amen. Almost there. Trying to make a hundred. But 99 will do. That's why God keeps me 100. And the reason you're hearing. But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And my thought today would be transformed by truth. Transform by truth. Father, we thank you for this time and this space. Speak to our hearts and our minds as we go into your word. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit says in the church. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you. And we give you praise. And the people of God said amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Transformed by truth. God's gracious word can make you into what he wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need. The truth transforms us. The truth. It transforms us. It changes. Amen. You're not the same person that you were before because the truth transforms us. Amen. Spiritual growth is the process of replacing lies with truth. I'll say that again. Spiritual growth is the process of replacing lies with truth. Jesus prayed, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. What are you saying, preacher? Sanctification requires revelation. God sets you apart so he can reveal to you things that he wants you to know as being a follower of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God uses the Word of God. <laughs> the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to make us like the Son of God. To become like Jesus, we must fill our lives with his word. Mm -hmm. Take your time, Pastor. Take your time. The Bible says, through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. We put together and we shaped up for the task that God has for us. God's word is unlike any other. It's alive. The word of God is alive. Every time I, I, I look at the word and I hear what the prophet said to the dry bones, 
He spoke, dry bones ye shall live. And he was making his exit out of the graveyard. But he heard a noise. He heard a rattle and he heard a shake and he turned around and his eyes like the popped out his head. Foot bone, back bone, hip bone, neck bone, shoulder bone, head bone, all these bones got together and stood. Why? Because the simple fact he spoke the word. Amen. Dry bones, you should live. Why? The word is alive. Amen. Jesus said the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So when he said, when I talk to you, I'm talking to you by my spirit and life. I'm giving you life each time you read me or you hear from me. I'm giving you life. Amen. When God speaks, things change. Amen. <laughs> I know that's right. Amen. Everything around you, all of creation, exists because God said it. Amen. He spoke it into all existence. Without God's word, you would not even be alive. Amen. Amen. Take your time. Take your time. Without God's word, we wouldn't be alive. And God had given us his word. His word has given us strength, Amen. correction, yes. longevity, yes. and power to stand in the midst of chaos. Yes. James pointed out, he said, God decided to give us life through the word of truth. So we might be the most important of all the things he made. And you don't think you special to God. Amen. Oh yes you are. You special to God. Even when you think you're not. Amen. You special. Amen. The Bible is far more than a doctrinal guidebook. God's word generates life. God's word generates life. God's word generates life. Creates faith, produces change, frightens the devil, causes miracles, heals hurts, builds character, transforms circumstances, imparts joy, overcomes adversities, defeats temptation, infuses hope. Releases power, yes. cleanses our mind, bring things into being, yes. and guarantees our future forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I feel all that like I, I, I brought it with me. Amen. Praise Amen. God. This, this stay around the fire. I declare you're going to get warm. Amen. If you stay around the ice, I declare you're going to be chilly. Amen. So, we cannot live without the word of God. We can't. Never take it for granted, people of God. You should consider it as essential to your life. As who? Job said, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Mm -hmm. God's word is the spiritual nourishment you must have to fulfill your purpose. I'll say that again. God's word is the spiritual nourishment you must have to fulfill your purpose. I feel the healing in my body. Amen. 
to deal with us. I feel that healing. God keeps his word. Go through with you. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I'm right on you here. Your name calls me. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, the Bible is called our milk. Bread. Solid food. And sweet dessert. <laughs> Did you read your sweetie today? <laughs> your dessert. Your breakfast. Your lunch. And your dinner. So, this for course meal is the spirit menu for spiritual strength and growth. Peter advises us. He say, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Hello, somebody. Amen. So we must abide in God's word. There are more Bibles in print today than ever before. They got all kinds of Bibles. A Bible on the shelf is worthless. But that's the way it lives on the shelf. Millions of believers are plagued with spiritual anorexia, starving to death from spiritual malnutrition, as we speak now. That's why the world is crazy. Amen. But they don't know who they are. They need spirit. They need word. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word going to stand. Amen. It's the word that keeps us. Without it, we couldn't make it. Amen. To be a healthy disciple of Jesus, feeding on God's word must be your first priority. In other words, your top priority. Jesus called it abiding. I love that chapter. 15 chapter John. John, take the time to read it. He said, if you abide in my word, then you are truly, truly, truly disciples of mine. Ooh, that tell you who you are right there. Because yeah, a lot of people know that they're not abiding. They don't know. They don't know. In day-to-day -day living, abiding in God's word includes three activities. Three of them. One, I must accept its authority. Two, I must assimilate its truth. Three, I must supply its principles to my life. So let's deal with right now, I must accept its authority, talking about the Bible. The Bible must become the authentic standard for my life. It is the compass I rely on for direction. The counsel I listen to for making wise decisions. The benchmark I use for elevating everything. The Bible must always have the first and last word in my life. I'll say that again. The Bible, which is the Word of God, must always have the first and last word in my life. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, yeah. It's something else. We had many troubles. 
We have many troubles. Many of our troubles occur because we base our choices on unreliable authorities. Here are four choices. I want to talk about them. Is that all right? Amen. One, culture. Culture means everyone is doing it. You look at the culture today. Blacks and, 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 and long hair, they just, they just doing it. I'm talking about men. Look at the culture. See, this is our culture. Everyone is doing it. Then the tradition. We've always done it. They don't want to change. Reason. It seems logical. So they do it. Emotion. It just feels right. All four of these are flawed by the fall. This fallen world. What we need is a perfect standard that will never lead us in the wrong direction. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Only God's word meets that need. Solomon reminds us Every word of God is flawless. And Paul explains everything in the scriptures is God's word. Mm. All of it is useful for teaching and helping people and for correcting them and showing them how to live. That's why they don't want to hear preaching. They don't want to hear teaching. And they don't want to come to church because they don't want to stop their mess. Amen. And they do have a Bible, it turned colors. Yeah. The sun didn't beat the pages up because it just sits in the car. The sun just look beams down on it. But then the individual that's driving it, it's just there in the car. What good is you carrying all that knowledge around with you? And don't even take the time out to read it. It, it will save your soul. Amen. 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 Decide that regardless of culture, tradition, reasoning, or emotion, you choose the Bible as your final authority. It's your final authority. You may have many books and all that, but you, you you use everything, you use that, read it, all right, but you always come back to your B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. So, determine to first ask, what does the Bible say when making decisions? Resolve that when God says to do something, you will trust God's word and do it whether or not it makes sense or you feel like doing it. And God will do every last one and do something. Right? Ain't feel like you want to hear it, but he told you to do it. God is how you felt or uh, what was going on. Your job was to be obedient. Adopt Paul's statement as your personal affirmation of faith. I believe everything that agrees with the law and what and what that is written in the prophets. God used these prophets to give the people his word. I must succinctly, it's true. What do you mean, preacher? It is not enough to believe the Bible. I must fill my mind with it so that the Holy Spirit can transform me with the truth. 
And today, people are believing a lie more so than the truth. There are five ways to do this, people of God. First, you receive God's word when you listen and accept it with an open, receptive attitude. Your attitude must change when you hear the word of God. Amen. You may not believe it, but the word of God will change your attitude. Amen. You'll see things as politically correct. Amen. Second, for most of the two thousand year history of the church only priests got to personally read the Bible but beings of us have access to it today in spite of this many believers are more faithful to reading their daily newspaper than their Bibles. Amen. It's no wonder we don't grow. Because the Bible is not top priority. We can't watch television for three hours, then read the Bible for three minutes Amen. and expect to grow. Many who claim to believe the Bible from cover to cover, have never read it from cover to cover. But if you will read the Bible just 15 minutes a day, you will read completely through it in one year. Just 15 minutes a day. You ain't got the pressure. Holy Ghost say, take your time, person. Read. Amen. Amen. If you cut out the 30 minute television program a day and read your Bible instead, you will read the entire Bible twice a year. Daily Bible reading will keep you in range of God. He talking. Amen. I say he talking. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. Third, researching or studying the Bible is another practical way to abide in the Word. I'll say that again. Re researching or studying the Bible is another practical way to abide in the word. The difference between reading and studying the Bible involves two additional activities. Asking questions of the text and writing your insights. You haven't really studied the Bible unless you're written in your thoughts on paper or put it in your computer. The fourth way to abide in God's word is by remembering. Remembering it. Your capacity to remember is a God-given gift. Remembering is a God-given gift. You may think you have a poor memory. But the truth is you have millions of ideas and truth, facts, and figures memorized. Amen. Yes, you do. You remember what it is important to you. Wow. You know when you get paid. You remember that, don't you? Amen. Come on, talk to me. If God's word is important, you would take the time to remember it. There are numerous benefits to memorizing Bible verses. They are healthy. 
It will help you resist temptation, make wise decisions, reduce stress, build confidence, offer good advice, and share your faith with others. And share your faith with others. And share your faith with others. Tell folk what God has done. Tell folk what God is doing. People need to know that. Can I get a witness? Amen, Amen everybody. Amen. Your memory is like a muscle. Mm -hmm. The more you use it, the stronger it will become. And memorizing scripture will become easier. The three keys to memorizing scripture are review, Review and review. Amen. Review, review, and review. The Bible says, remember what Christ taught. Let his word enrich your lives and make you wise. The fifth way to abide in God's word is to reflect on it, which the Bible calls meditation. For many, the idea of meditating conjures up images and putting your mind in neutral and letting it wander. This is the exact opposite of biblical meditation. Mm -hmm. Meditation is focused thinking. Meditation is focused thinking. You're focused and you're thinking. That's why when you take the word of God and you focus on it and you start thinking, should nothing break their focus. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. It takes serious effort. You select the verse and reflect on it over and over and over and over in your mind. That's how you meditate. No other habit can do more to transform your life and make you more like Jesus than daily reflection on Scripture. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen, Amen everybody. Amen. As we take the time to contemplate God's truth, seriously reflecting on the example of Christ, we are transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. God gonna get the glory. Yes, sir. Whether you realize it or not. Doesn't matter how you feel or what's happening in your life, God say, I'm gonna get glory. Amen. Matter of fact, I want glory. Amen. Give him the glory. Amen. Yeah, God, give him the glory. I don't think I can make it shut up. I'll give him the glory. Amen. I don't think I can do this. He shut up, give him the glory. Amen. Not my will. But your sure will be done. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you look up all the times God speaks about meditation in the Bible, you will be amazed at the benefits He has promised to those who take the time to reflect on His Word throughout the day. That's why a person that's studying God's word, they're different. Amen. They're not the same. Amen. I don't care how they was yesterday, but they've been in God's word all day long. When you talk to them, they're really different. Amen. Amen. They forgot about what you said and you insulted them. They, 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 they're forgiving you. Amen. And the only thing they can speak to you is what? God's yeah. word. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I know that. I know that's your problem. You know it. But you don't believe it. 
One of the reasons God called David a man after my own heart is that David loved to reflect on God's word. He said, how I love your teachings. I think about them all day long. He was after the heart of God. Amen. He was good. Although he was in a whole lot of mess. When he heard God's teachings, it cooled him out, but then he goes do something crazy again. That's not that's not some people I know. Not y'all. Do not speak. Mm -hmm. Serious reflection on God's truth is a key to answer prayer and the secret to successful living. How you living? How you living? How you living? Are your days like nights and your nights like days? How you living? Are you resting properly in Him? Talking about in Christ. Or we just feel crampy. Because we feel that God has not done nothing for us. He's done a whole lot for us. Amen. And He's still doing a whole lot. I must apply its principles. Receiving, reading, researching, and remembering. I got to keep that, them four R's in mind. Receiving, reading, researching, and remember. Keep that in mind when you read. Receive, read, research it, and remember. Just don't run through scripture. Right. Look what it means. What is it saying to you? What is he saying? What is he talking about? And you'll find out it will impact your life. Amen. Amen. Reflecting on the word are all useless if we fail to put them into practice. But good is not all of that. We ain't even practicing it. And God said, look, I love the sinner, but what they practice, I hate. I love them, but what they practice, I hate. We must become doers of the word. This is the hardest step of all because Satan fights it so intensely. He don't want you being a doer. He doesn't mind you going to Bible study as long as you don't do anything with what you what you learn or heard. Say, go, baby, go. Go, go get your study. I don't care you to go hear it. Just don't do it. Because he comes to the Bible study. Because he knows what the word says. And he don't want you doing it. Can I get a witness? Amen. We fool others. Yeah. We do. We fool, we fool ourselves when we assume that just because we have heard or read or studied a truth, we have adopted it. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can be so busy going to the next class or seminar or Bible conference that you have no time to implement what you just learned. You get knowledge on top of knowledge, on top of knowledge, on top of knowledge, on top of knowledge, on top of knowledge. You forget on the way to your next study without interpretation all our Bible studies are worthless. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built 
his house on the rock. Not the same. On the rock. Jesus also pointed out that God's blessing comes from obeying the truth. I'm going to say that again. God's blessings come from obeying the truth, not just knowing it. You have to obey it. You ever talk to me? Yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. They know all of it, but they don't obey it. And the reason why they don't obey it is because of the simple fact they know it. But good is knowing a thing and you ain't doing it. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. I'm almost finished it up. Take your time. No, I did that already. <laughs> I done got my blessing already. Amen. Yeah. I'm feeding it. It's up to you. Amen. You got to study show yourself approved. Amen. This is for you. My job. I'm the mailman. I'm delivering your mail. Amen. You might not want it. You throw it in the corner. You think it's junk mail. It ain't junk mail. You say urgent. <laughs> urgent. Amen. But who's it from? The government? Oh, the government. I've been over this. Yeah. Amen. This is from the governor. Amen. Amen. This is from the governor. He's saying something to you. Amen. Amen. We avoid personal application. We avoid it. What you talking about, Peter? What are you talking about, Pastor? Another reason why we avoid personal application is that it can be difficult or even painful. When you're going through something, you can't talk about it. Sometimes when you talk about it, it can't deliver what you're going through. When you confess your faults to one and another, there's going to be a change. Amen. Make sure you've got scripture in your seasoning. Mm -hmm. And if you got scripture in your seasoning, God mellows them out. Oh, yes, he does. Amen. The truth will set you free. Amen. And some of you didn't find out the truth since you've been under this ministry. Yes. Some fight the truth. Some don't want to hear the truth. Some say, tell me the truth, but you tell them and they can't deal with the truth. Yes. But once you can deal with the truth, you're going to catch it on both sides. Yeah. What is the truth? Takes you in, it's the truth, takes you out. One thing about a lion, they tell one lie, forget it, tell another lie. Yeah, and you ask what they say, they tell a third lie. Mm -hmm. They just lie, they just lie, and that's what the devil, the devil said, you know I'm a lion? Mm -hmm. It's just like a snake. Put them in a box, put them on an airplane, and go straight up in the air because of the temperature. And once he get up there, you call yourself going to see if he defrosted. And he defrosted, and he looks around and he bites you. And the first thing you say, what you bite me for? He said, you know I'm a snake. That's what I do. You better be careful, people. You be surprised that the snakes had already bit you. But God already took the sting out. So that poison won't afflict you or slow you up in your work for the Lord. Amen. Do you really take his work priority? Mm -hmm. It is top priority for my life. I can speak that my application. It's top priority. Amen. Whatever he orders, I must do. Amen. 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 I just ask God for strength to do what he wants me to do. Yes. Amen. And give me the wisdom and courage and understanding that I know not. Amen. And he does. Amen. 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 It is what the doctor ordered. He's my doctor. Amen. 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 So, the truth will set you free, but first, it may make you miserable. The truth. Yeah, we feel to be honest with ourselves. 
we first had the truth, we kind of made us feel some type of way, like Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I was cool to the do not came. Yes. Don't do this, I can't do this, and don't do don't. He said, wait a minute. That's a lot of stuff I don't do. I was not doing what I've done yet, but that's the spirit man. God filled him with his spirit. And all the things that he said was the do not. He had to follow. I guess he was miserable. He became accustomed to it because he was spending time, hear me now, writing this New Testament. Mm -hmm. So if you're writing what God said to write, it's going to change you. Yeah. And you read about this boy, everything that happened to him, he went through. Mm -hmm. He talks about it in Romans, the fifth chapter. He said, experience, make it hope, hope, make it not a shame. He's been there. Then he goes into the sixth chapter, shall we continue to sin that the grace of God shall abide? No. They said to the seventh chapter, he said, the things that I say I'm not going to do, I find myself going to Then he goes to the eighth verse, he said, there, now there's no what? Condemnation. condemnation. What he's saying is that he lived in that. Yeah, yeah. And you got to look how God brought him out of that. But he kept on writing. God loved him so, when God spoke to him, he was writing to the Corinthians, the Philippians, he was writing a letter to them and telling them what was happening in their churches. And they wanted to know how the heck he know all of that. He put a message in the Bible by the time they get to him, he back two or three years. But he already knew what was happening. See, God is direct. I need to work on that. God is straight direct. When God wants something done, he comes to the individual that he wants to do it. He ain't going around and your aunt tell and all them crazy. Anybody ain't want you. Right. And it might be miserable to you because you got to give up some stuff. You've really been half-stepping. And since you've been half-stepping, God said, no, I need you to take full steps. I want you to go full in the truth. And when you go full in the truth, I can bless you. Amen. I want to break up that miserable. Mm -hmm. And the miserable is because of the simple fact you get truth. And the truth of the matter is, have you run into people? Tell me that truth. Mm -hmm. And they can't deal with the truth. But the truth can hurt. Yeah. God's word exposes our motives. It points out our faults. It rebukes our sin and expects us to change. That's what the Word of God does. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone to a scripture? Let's be honest. You ain't got to begin to tell me, but you be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Be honest with God. You got a description, and you said, I don't want to read that. Mm -hmm. You know why you didn't want to read it? Mm -hmm. You was in it. Mm -hmm. So you run over to the New Testament. And New Testament said the same thing. You said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I think I'll take a break today. <laughs> I'm going to read something else. And you go read something that's a daily bread or something. And you go read the daily bread because you think you got away from the truth, the truth that day. Same thing. You say, you know what? God is trying to what? tell me something. God trying to tell you something. He's going to get through. He's going to hit you direct. And a lot of us here have already hit direct. But we know how to ignore God. Yeah, we do. We not even know what another to do. People look at, hey, hey, Tony, you know. <laughs> you, we, we do that. We know how to ignore people. We ignore God. God asks you, yeah, hear me, come here. I'm waiting for you to talk to me. Already told you what I need you to do. Why are you lackadaisy? Or lacking at what I told you? Now, I've given you the authority. I've given you the power. I've given you the knowledge to do what I told you to do. So God's word exposes our motives. It points out our what? Faults. We have them. It rebukes our sin. The word of God rebukes your sin. That's why you don't want to read it. <laughs> 
the check, and he the same thing you was running from. Mm -hmm. Put that little finger on God, I gotta go. Somebody called me. And you go, and they tell you the same thing. You running from God. Mm -hmm. Warning always comes before destruction. When God speaks, you gotta listen. Amen. 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 And expect us to change. When God point out things to us in our lives, when we read the word of God, he expected us to change. Amen. You can't stay the same serving God like that. Amen. Amen. God wants all of it. Not just some of it. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. It's human nature to resist change. It is. So applying God's word is hard work. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know years ago, one of those scriptures, we write the scriptures on a three by five card. The other side, we put the verse where it came from. Go to work, take with them, get a break, and read the scripture. Ah, first John 1 to 7. And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the love, power, and sound mind. But God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. Yeah. sound mind. In other words, what I'm doing? Review? Review? Review. It won't stay there. Amen. Why? It started to get to your spirit. That's how you receive scripture and meditate on it. It comes back. Because the enemy will hit you all the time with fear. He says, God, he gave you that. Because the word says that. Shall we continue and send that the grace and passion of God? No. He said, you, 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 have, not, you have not the spirit of bondage again Amen. unto fear. In other words, that brought you out of that. This is why it is so important to discuss your personal application with other people. God said, you ashamed of me? I'm ashamed of you. And I will rebuke you. Why? Because the simple fact. You're ashamed of me. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. The word of God is alive. It yes. lives in us. Amen. It's life. You can't live without it. Amen. That's why we live in the day, because of the word of God. Amen. He spoke, and look what happened. Life came. Amen. And since life came, he given us life, that we may give life. Yes. Amen. And then he gave us that light, to light up every dark thing that's in our life. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. So I hope this message has helped you today. Oh, yeah. That'd be long. That'd be long out here. It's the Bible. You need the Word of God. Transferred by the truth. And I hear people, yeah, I'm born again. But where's the truth? They're going, it's like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Christian warfare going on all on YouTube, all on Facebook, all they're going back and forth talking. Uh, nobody has the love of Jesus. You got the Israelites saying one thing, you got Geno saying one thing, you got these other people, I don't know where they come from, they talking about something. Everybody want to get into the Bible, and I said, they need to be saved. Amen. They need to be delivered. Amen. Jesus never criticized no one. Amen. He brought love. Amen. He brought the power. Yes. And he gave us that authority. He said, him that went his soul is wise. When you win souls, you wise. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. That means that you know something. And when you know something, folk want to know what you know. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Stay close to God. Stay in your word. You got time in your hand? Find your place and just sit down and just read God. Ask God. Ask God what, what you want me to read God. Mm -hmm. Go into the New Testament. And they show you some things. And they then he may transfer you over to an old testament for an example of things that happen to the prophets. Things that happen to the Israelites. Jebusites. All of sites. There's a lot of men. 
disobedience ain't nothing to Amen. Amen. Stay faithful. Stay true to God. Regardless of what it looks like. People come and go. You got to make a big mind. What God has given them. Do you not know that the gift of meditating? That's what the Holy Ghost does. It brings back remembrance. Yes. When you got the Holy Ghost, you can remember. Amen. 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 Whatever you heard about God, whatever you read about God, the Holy Spirit brings it back to you. Can I get a witness of Amen. Look at your blessings. Count them one by one. Or name them one by one. And you'll find that you are super blessed. Amen. You just take a trip downtown, just on the subway, you'll see people messed up. People living underneath the ground. People have nothing. But here you come with a little bit of what you have. Bless me, keep on. Amen. And God says, since you saw her, you saw him, and you blessed them, I want to bless you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Have enough word in you that you can feed somebody. Yeah. Just don't feed them no anything. And we can always get people junk food. Can I get a witness? Amen. Feed them some nourishment. That's the word of God. Before you minister or talk to one another, ask God what you want me to say. And the only way you can do that is that you've got to be in Scripture. God say, I Give them that fruit that you had yesterday morning before you ate your breakfast. We got in a good conversation. And you got to have it open up your understanding. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It all started coming back to you. Now you minister. It will be five minutes now, two hours. And you say, where and the where did the time go? What you doing? You're giving out. You can pour it into them. And they stand and they look and laugh. Wow. I didn't know. If you pray with them, so it can hold and stay solid. So it can hold and stay solid. They're going to come again because you know what? Nourishment. Can I get a witness? Amen. So if God nourishes us, we have to nourish them. As the church is saying. Be blessed. Remember that God don't make no jump. Can I get a witness? God don't make no jump. He specializes in jump. Did you hear what I said? He specializes in jump. We just seen a lot of jump in our lives. We was full of jump. Can I get a witness? He blessed you. Took the junk out. Yes. Put his spirit in. Can I get a witness? Amen. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for how you blessed us. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your love. Now, Lord, as we close out of this service, strengthen the minds of your people. Let them abide.